I am considering converting to Judaism. Not to denigrate my Catholic upbringing, but Christianity in all its forms is essentially a sequel. It's God too. The sun also rises. There are not all that many differences between Judaism and Christianity. Jews do in fact own guilt, but Catholics lease. And of course, the number one Christian, Jesus of Nazareth, Yeshua ben Joseph, was a Jew. A Jew not unlike a lot of modern Jews. He celebrated Passover, kept Shabbos, he lived at home until he was 30, and his mother thought he was God. There's also a lot of commonality among the major religions. I mean, everybody agrees that the first five books of the Bible are holy books. The disagreement is really over which subsequent books are holy. Christians believe the Gospels of Jesus are the final answer. Muslims believe it's the Quran. A lot of Americans believe salvation lies in the first five albums of Elvis. But if I do become Jewish, I certainly won't be the first African American to do so. Sammy Davis Jr. became a Hebrew. But way before Samala, Ethiopian Jews endured and in recent years have made their way to new lives in Israel and other places. After this break, we'll return to hear the latest about the Befa Israel, the Ethiopian Jews. We'll also meet an African-American rabbi of a Chicago synagogue. This rabbi has soul. Back in a moment. And now let's meet our double minority guests. Capers Fene is rabbi of the Beth Shalom Ethiopian Hebrew Congregation in Chicago and also works for the Jewish Council on Urban Affairs. Rabbi Fene is an observant member of the tribe, or MOT, and along with other black Jews, claims Jewish lineage from one of Israel's lost tribes. Ladina Schnapper is an activist for the Beta Israel, better known as Ethiopian Jews, and has been the international coordinator for the American Association for Ethiopian Jews, spending the last two years in Ethiopia. She is also a former Peace Corps volunteer, speaks the Ethiopian Amharic language, and is modeling the latest hip Ethiopian Jewish fashion statement. <laughs> well, thank you all both for being my guests. Thank you for having me. Uh, Rabbi Fene, can you explain to us briefly the difference between your organization and the Beta Israel and the difference between that and the Hebrew Israelites? Uh, briefly, the... Good, we like briefly here. We like the that. The Black Jews uh, are an organization, particularly here in Chicago. Beth Shalom Ethiopian Hebrew Congregation was started in 1913. Uh, our former chief rabbi who passed away two years ago, Abahu Rubin, was a member of the congregation of the Hebrew Israelite movement that was organized in 1913 on the south side of the city of Chicago. Uh, there are connections. We feel a kinship with Beta Yisrael, the Jews of Ethiopia, uh, the black Hebrew Israelites, or the black Hebrews of Demona, many of their leaders came out of our movement. Uh, our rabbi, in fact, taught uh, Ben Ami, who was the leader of the group in Demona. And uh, there were several philosophical differences, uh, ideological differences, theological differences, and thus uh, Ben Ami and several other members uh, departed and laid the track then to redefine for themselves um, the fact of how they wanted to perceive God, the God of Israel, and themselves as Israelites. Well, Our congregation is uh, basically one that is observant of Jewish law, which is the halakha. Uh, it is the guiding force for us, um, so that our observance of the Holy Scriptures uh, are predicated upon the halakha. Okay. Well, Ms. Ladina, can you recount for us briefly the story, uh, the fabulous story of the, uh, how the Ethiopian Jews made it uh, to Israel? In a half an hour, I cannot. Okay. But just in a nutshell, the overview. In a nutshell, it's been years of a lot of dedicated effort on the part of um, the American Association for Ethiopian Jews, of which I have been a part, as well as a lot of our dedicated supporters, a lot of uh, caring senators and congressmen on Capitol Hill that uh, helped us form the Congressional Caucus for Ethiopian Jews. We were very instrumental in helping the Jews during the Sudanese airlift as well as Operation Solomon 
released on uh, in 1991. So now the first, now the, the Sudanese airlift was in 1987. 80. Oh, 85, 86. 80, oh, okay, 86. Yes. And this was these were Ethiopian Jews. Uh, the, the government of Israel did not, it couldn't have any contact with the uh, Ethiopian government because uh, the president was thought the, it was anti-Israeli, and so there were secret flights, right? Out right. Of what, what happened? There were about 10,000 Jews that walked out of Ethiopia to Sudan. Okay. Many of them died there. Perhaps Why did they 3, leave? What, 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 what was so bad about Ethiopia for Jews? At that time, there was a very oppressive government. Number one. Number two, there was a lot of famine. And number three, there was the beginning exodus of Jews going to Israel in a variety of ways. So they thought if they went to Sudan, perhaps they would be rescued. They were, but unfortunately, about 3,000 of them died. And um, we were instrumental in helping with that airlift. And also, I must say that also the state of Israel, who cared, and that combination of people and effort finally uh, ended up and focused on May um, 26, 1991, when 14,497 Ethiopian Jews were brought out of Ethiopia in one day. It's called Operation Solomon. Cool. Now, also, some of those Ethiopian Jews who left uh, Ethiopia have ended up in your congregation, I'm told. That's true. From uh, Actually, some of the Ethiopians that are here in the United States... Uh, are here by way of uh, traveler's aid, actually, and uh, which is which is, I guess, an international organization that helps refugees and okay. things of this nature. And um, I was introduced to oh, at least three families by Ladina. Uh, and at the time, I was the office manager for Spurtis College of Judaica and on Michigan Avenue. On here Michigan in Chicago. Avenue, so uh, that I was uh, in that position, was able to bring some of the young men in and uh, help them with uh, some part-time jobs and also uh, help them with uh, enrolling in uh, courses and schools. I'm very proud to say that uh, several of the young men have gone on and have their degrees now in engineering and are working for some of the larger corporations uh, in America in uh, various fields. You, many members of your congregation do not convert to Judaism, uh, which is to say don't follow the, all of the rituals of conversion as prescribed by some of the uh, European Jews. How come? Well, they do. Okay. The, the fact is that they convert under our guidance. We do not ask the uh, European community, the European Jewish community, to come in and quote-unquote officiate over the conversion of those African Americans who feel a sense of kinship. But you did. Uh, you, you I did. I did, actually, after, in, in 1985, after reading an account of Rabbi Halevi, who was from France, who, was, uh, who went to Ethiopia who, to study the, the uh, Beit Yisrael in Ethiopia. Uh, I forget the name of the organization, Universal Israelite, that sent him there to do an investigation of these black Jews. And when the rabbi got there and told the Ethiopians that he was a rabbi and a Jew and that he wanted to help them, they said there's no such thing as white Jews. Uh, we're the last of the Jews. And the rabbi said, but I am, and I'm a rabbi, and there's a Jewish community that wants to help and assist you. And the Ethiopians said, well, maybe all of that's true, but to us, you're not a Jew. Now, this man, being from France, uh, could have simply said, well, I know who I am, and turned his back and walked away. Mm. But he didn't. Um, he underwent conversion in Ethiopia mm. so that the Ethiopian community would feel that kinship with him. Yeah. Uh, that didn't make him less of a rabbi. Right. It didn't make him less of whatever nationality that he was, a Frenchman. Uh, but w what, in fact, it did do was show to the Ethiopians that he felt a kinship with them. And My was conversion was predicated, basically, on the act of Rabbi Halevi. I wanted to show the Ashkenazic community here in Chicago and around sure. the world that I have a sense of kinship. And on that note, we're going to take a break. We'll be back with our guest talking about black Jews after this message. Well, that's a very...